A common approach for data analysis is to use interactive visualizations with tools like Tableau and Power BI. Another approach is to use programming languages like Python or R. Both of these methods have benefits and drawbacks. Interactive visual analysis processes are intuitive and leverage perceptual capabilities, but users have to redo the entire analysis when the dataset updates or changes. Computational analysis is flexible, powerful, and can be easily reused. On the other hand, computational analysis requires that an analyst knows how to program, they can be time consuming, and it's often difficult to see what is in the data. In this paper, we introduce methods to capture and reuse workflows in an interactive visualization environment. A workflow is a curated set of interactions that can be reused just like a function in a program. Let's look at how capturing a workflow can be achieved. We load a scatter plot by specifying the dimensions of data set we want to explore. We see that this plot has outliers, which we want to filter out. To do this, we make two rectangular selections to select the outliers. We now filter out the selected points. We can use these actions to create a filter outliers workflow. This workflow can be reused in a limited manner, but it is not robust enough to be reapplied to updated data sets. If we try to apply this workflow to an updated data set, we might miss some outliers. We can address this problem by capturing the semantics of selections. After an initial selection, our system computes many different patterns that could be in the data sets and ranks them based on how well they match to the selection. In this example, the outlier pattern was top ranked. An analyst confirms that this is the intended pattern. We can then use this pattern to filter the outliers. We can use the smart selection as part of a robust workflow. Let's look at what happens if we apply this workflow to an updated version of this data set. The updated data set has two new inliers and three new outliers, and several other points have moved. We can apply the workflow to this updated data set. First, we apply the brush selection to the data set and see that the one new outlier was selected. Next, we apply the smart selection. We do this by rerunning the algorithm that was used to capture the pattern in the first place on the new data set. Here, we perfectly classify the new outlier and inlier points. The subsequent filter removes both the new and the old outliers. We can store these smart workflows in a workflow database and reuse them on updated datasets within the visualization environment or call them just like a function in a computational environment. Our system supports view specification, selections, and data transformations. For view specification, we can choose dimensions of a dataset and visualize them in scatter plots and parallel coordinate plots. The key to reusable workflows are pattern-based selections. Here, we select a few points in a cluster. Our system then suggests a cluster, which we select. For data transformations, we support four actions. Filtering, which removes items. Labeling, which assigns a unique label to individual items. Categorization, which is used to classify items. and aggregations, which derives a summary item from a group of items. Let's take a look at how all this works in practice. Here, we see a scatter plot of a dataset showing monthly COVID-19 cases and monthly COVID-19 deaths for January 2021. Our goal is to categorize the outlier countries into three categories, high death, high cases, low death, high cases, and high death, low cases. We can interact with the scatter plot by brushing a region to select a group of points. The system calculates predictions and suggests refinements for our selection. We can hover over the different suggested predictions and compare the results to our selection. The first prediction best matches our intention of selecting the outliers, so let's select that. We then filter in our selection. Next, we brush the countries with high number of deaths and high number of cases and categorize them. We repeat the same for the other two categories. We see that all our interactions are tracked in a provenance graph. 
the provenance graph shows all the actions executed and on which version of a dataset they were made on. We can load an updated version of the dataset to see if our interactions are properly applied to different versions of the dataset. When datasets change, it is important for humans to review the interactions our system automatically applies. We can record that the update is correct by verifying the interactions for a new version of the dataset and creating a workflow. We first add a new workflow in the workflow editor and name it Categorize Outliers. We seed the workflow based on the history leading up to the last categorized action. We can now curate the workflow and remove irrelevant interactions from the final curated workflow. Now, let's look at how we can bridge between interactive and computational workflows by using our newly created categorized outlier workflow in a Jupyter notebook. The notebook loads our reapply library and COVID-19 data for three months, December 2020, January 2021, and June 2021. We load the COVID project and list all the workflows available. Then we select the categorize outlier workflow. We can print a summary, which shows the individual actions in the workflow. We then apply the workflow to the datasets by passing it to the apply function and extracting the result. We plot the datasets to verify, and it looks good. We can now continue further analysis here such as plotting a stacked bar chart to look at how the categories change across different months and which regions of the world they belong to. Please review the paper for more details on our technique, and thank you for watching our video.